What's up guys, War here, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going over dungeons, a brief overview of what dungeons are and how they work and why they are so important to be doing in Diablo 4. Now all of this is going to be before we get to the end game part of dungeons. This is just going to be the overview while we have it in the beta and just kind of the general consensus here of why you should be doing them. Dungeons in Diablo 4 are very powerful. They're going to reward you with a lot of experience and gold, but there's some other important things that you're going to want to use dungeons for besides just grabbing experience and gold, and that is going to be renown and then the aspect legendary powers that you can use in the game. Before that, let's go over some general information about dungeons in Diablo 4. Because we only have access to Act 1 Fractured Peaks in the beta, it has 24 total dungeons. As you guys can see here on the map, there's 21 dungeons shown, but the other three are only accessible after completing all the strongholds, two from Nostrava and one in Malnok. Now within each dungeon, there's what is called monster families. Each dungeon is gonna have a specific set of monsters, families, which is one to two that spawn within. So for example, if you have vampires and fallen and they've spawned in the dungeon before, you can always be assured that they're gonna spawn again. Also, each dungeon normally has two to three shrines in each one to help you speed along the process. And each shrine is gonna give you 35% increased movement speed on top of other powerful effects like damage increase, explosion circle, or whatever other powers that you could get in the game or become a human conduit. These are very powerful effects to help you clear it even faster. Also within these dungeons are going to be side quests and special content. So side quests will be things like, you know, using particular unlocks or saving, you know, uh, villagers from being tied up or there's special content like curse shrines and chests that you can do. So when you start them, you got to fight some elites and fight some other monsters to complete them. These are randomized within each dungeon, so they're not guaranteed, unlike the monsters and or elites. On top of that, you have your objectives and boss fights where it's like activate gate controls, free prisoners, activate levers, and then of course, you're gonna have a boss fight pretty much in every single dungeon, and all of them are different. They're pretty self-explanatory, and once you defeat them, you're gonna be able to get a really nice reward from defeating them, which includes legendaries. Also, throughout the dungeon, you're gonna be finding legendaries that you can get from chests, and as well as uh, defeating elites inside the game. When it comes to the bosses of each dungeon, each of them are unique in their own way, which utilize specific elements like poison, frost, blood, containment. They always have a lot of special abilities as well as having other adds or elite minions that they can spawn to make the boss fights very, very difficult. A lot of them you can do solo, but a lot of them you definitely could use as a team or do it in group play. The bosses are very, very hard for a reason. While you're fighting them, each of the ticks will drop potions for you guys. This is very important to make the boss fights feel very unique and very worth it when you complete a dungeon. Now, dungeons in the end game are gonna feel like kind of the greater rifts from Diablo 3 and this is kind of cool because you're going to be able to unlock and get uh, what are called uh, sigils which you can use to upgrade dungeons to make them nightmare dungeons and make them even stronger up to level 100 but more on that later. Now besides all the juicy loot and legendaries and fighting unique bosses the main reason that you're going to be wanting to do dungeons is the unlocked aspect as well as the renown points that you gain from completing them. And each dungeon completed, you're going to get 20 renounce points upon completion, which is 30 points less than completing a stronghold. Strongholds give you a lot more. They give you 50. Now, with the aspects, okay, the aspects are going to be able to unlock unique powers for your classes. Okay, now each dungeon, you're going to get an aspect completed on the very first time that you do it and then after that that is it there is 115 total aspects that can be found across all the dungeons in diablo 4 and they focus on a generic or a class specific aspect that will empower your build for example like making certain uh spells you know jump to more enemies or making your 
Hammer of the Ancient Smash do uh, an AoE damage to all of your enemies in a particular area. So there's a lot of different aspect powers that you can use. Now the aspects are legendary aspects, but they can be applied to current legendary items or they can be applied to rare items. You imbue them to make your character even more powerful, but it's also costly to use. They cost a lot of resources to use at the Occultist, and you can only use them once from what it looks like in the beta. I hope that this might be changing and where you can use the aspects more and more times. I know that once you uh, like sacrifice a legendary item and you get the power from that, you use the aspect and apply it to a weapon and it only applies once, which makes you have to re refarm those legendary aspects and i wonder if you use the legendary aspect on from a dungeon that once you use it then you reset the dungeon and you're able to get it again so i hope that they change this in there the ones you get from the dungeons are just permanent and you can just apply them whenever similarly to the kanaius cube from diablo 3 but we'll see what happens on the full release of the game in the end the main reason to be doing dungeons is to be grinding and collecting all of the legendary aspects to boost your character's powers as well as getting those renown points that add to the each aspect of the map so each of the five zones you increase your renown which gives you more uh, bonus skill points gives you increased uh, potions from like four to five to six also gives you a lot of gold in other aspects like uh, being able to have the boo-boos which you can roll at the new age kadala for legendaries so there's a lot of reasons to be doing dungeons in Diablo 4. Also, these are going to be the things that you're going to be doing in the end game to just kind of boost your character even stronger. So dungeons is a vital part of Diablo 4, and I really look forward to grinding them. One thing that I did notice was the layouts of the dungeons were pretty similar they were almost all always the same each time you did them i hope that this changes and gives a little bit more randomization to when you do them because like in diablo 3 you have a dungeon where you do it but the layout changes even though it's the same like dungeon or same you know aspect of it but the layout is just different so i hope that diablo 4 does that on full release so I hope that you guys have enjoyed this overview of the dungeons and I hope that it really does help you prepare for this upcoming open beta and make sure to like the video if you've enjoyed it. Comment down below what do you guys think about dungeons so far if you played early access and as always stay gaming. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.